empathy the most critical skill in medicine i asked anuj why you have chosen me to give this topic he said nobody else wants to talk to this topic so you will talk i said okay so this is a very interesting topic because uh, you know m most of you are mrcp i am an mrcp examiner rajesh ubadiya will agree with me empathy is a very important in these station 2 and 4 when you go for a stu as a student you must know about empathy otherwise they fail you because you know once uh, last last 10 day, 15 days back i was a mrcp examiner uh, the patient uh, gave a history he said my father uh, I, i lost my father a, a week ago and then uh, the the candidate did not show any um, any any emotion and you know he was keeping quiet then you know examiner found fault with him he said you know he didn't he didn't show empathy or sympathy so in the exam you expect and the students supposed to learn about empathy so it's a good thing anuj has uh, taken this topic i wish lot of post graduates are there but unfortunately not there so next time i think veena rajesh ubadi and myself can do a skit you know how to train the students in empathy we have a skit like a role model acting so that we'll do because veena is also with an expert in empathy okay the uh, background if you see the medical education literature on teaching non verbal detection and expression of empathy not covered satisfactorily non verbal as aspects of communication become more crucial where langu language proficiency may be limited and with the increasing cultural diversity of patients visiting hospitals you should have non verbal subtle non verbal communication such as gestures body position eye gaze including empathy may be the critical entry point for important trust building element in physician patient relationship what is empathy empathy is action of understanding compassion and being aware of another person's feeling and emotions simply empathy is the ability to step into someone else's shoes and to feel and understand their needs in medicine empathy is sometimes defined as a communication skill or as an emotional experience in which physicians identify and transiently experience their patient's emotional state based on visual and verbal cues the empathy and effective communications requires more than understanding the understanding you have must convey to the patient so that they know you understand patient feelings and then without judgment being right or wrong empathy help patients come to trust you as someone who cares about their welfare it also helps patients understand their own feelings more clearly in addition empathetic response facilitates the patient's own problem solving ability if they are allowed to express their feelings in a safe atmosphere patients may begin to feel more in control by understanding their feelings better every human being has a longing to be seen understood and appreciated there are four key features of empathy one is called understanding it is cognition the second one is feeling it's affective third is communication behavioral and fourth is intention to help altruism therefore recognize experience demonstrate willingness to help four steps to, to foster emp empathetic com com emp empathetic com uh, communication i already given you a short form and why it is important to have empathy it is a important social skill and clinical skill the neurobiology of empathy empathy really activates the reward centers of the brain and neuronal hormonal effects mirror neurons evidence suggest that it produces more enduring happiness that is why if you are empathy if you are empathetic your burnout is reduced that's why i told srinivasa murthy in the survey ask about empathy because that will give you more enduring happiness that there is a center in the brain and who definition is uh, i already told you the same thing who definition and then what is the difference between sympathy and empathy people think sympathy and empathy are same differently sympathy is understanding others pain whereas empathy is feeling others own pain i'll give you a normal example you go in a car in you see a road uh, traffic accident some of us will see the accident and say <coughs> and will drive that is only sympathy but if you have like rajesh ubadiya he'll at least call 1048 and say bring the ambulance that's action so that is empathy if not you get down and you know help the patient so many people are sympathetic but not empathetic and you know this is the acknowledge someone is distressed i am sorry you are lost but you know you have to feel the patient's uh, pain that is empathy and there are a lot of difference between empathy and sympathy i don't want to go into do much detail empathy is beyond sympathy it is an intellectual attribute 
Uh, this is again uh, a diagrammatic picture. Why? What is empathy and what is sympathy? Now, please learn this skill. The the Masters uh, uh, Boston Hospital has got a tool. What is empathy? E M P A T H Y. My friend Sony said value. I am giving empathy as a E for eye control, M for muscles of facial expression, P for posture, A for affect, T for tone of voice, H for hearing the whole patient, U for Y for y, your response. So you should have a posture also. When somebody says something wrong, you should at least show your posture, must explain. And your tone of voice, you have to have modulation. Don't, don't do that. You know, you always say, I'm very sorry, I don't know. Like that, you know, your tone must be, you should not talk in a big way. And hearing the whole patient, that is the E-F-P-T-H-Y. This tool is used in Massachusetts Hospital. And there are Jefferson scale of empathy. You can scale. There are 20 statements are there. There are two versions, one for the medical students, another for the physician. I don't want to go into the details, but the, you please understand, there is a measurement possible, Jefferson scale of empathy. And this important skill is addressed with a novel teaching tool for assessing non-verbal behavior using the acronym Randomized Control Trial of Empathy Training at Matthews Hospital in 2021, sorry, 2010 and 2012. The practice points for empathy, non-verbal body orientation, eye contact, active listening. This is non-verbal. Verbal, paraphrasing and mirroring patients' words, recognize patients' feelings, asking clarifying questions. Our uh, uh, previous speaker also said you should ask questions. So this is practicing empathy. Then uh, empathy is, uh, you know, example, I don't want to go into the examples. Now, three types of empathy. Please understand, there are three types of empathy. One is called cognitive. The second one is called emotional. And third one is called compassionate. The comp cognitive is simply knowing how other persons feel. Emotional, also known as affective empathy, when you feel, when you feel physically along with the other person. Compassionate or empathetic concern goes beyond simply understanding and offering. It actually moves you to take action. So empathy, three types of empathy, cognitive, emotional, and empathetic. The cognitive is desire to understand. Emotional empathy is desire to feel. And then compassionate empathy is desire to help and support. And you know, imagine a, person, a friend has recently lost a close family friend, uh, member. Your natural reaction may be sympathy, a feeling or pity or a sorrow. Sympathy may move, you, may move you to express condolence or send a card and your friend may appreciate these actions. But showing empathy is different. You, you know, you, start, you must say, who did they lose? How close they were? Besides feelings of pain, loss, how will their lifelong life now changes? Emotional empathy, you try to connect with something else. Suppose he says, uh, my, I have lost my mother, you must think, when my, uh, I lost my mother, what was my feeling? So you have to compare your feeling with them. That is emotional. Finally, when somebody says his mother is lost, you not only feel all that, you should go to his house, see what you can do. You can give them a meal or you can support them for a mortuary van, etc., etc. So this is three types of em 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 empathy. So empathy, understanding, sharing, expressing, and reflecting and taking action attitude. So this is empathy. Now, with empathy, we don't direct, we follow. Don't just do something, be there. That is empathy. Empathy, understanding, sharing. A patient is shown empathy more likely to feel emotionally connected to a doctor. How it is useful in the practice. A doctor's ability to establish an empathetic understanding of their patient's situation is considered essential to the development of therapeutic relationship. When a physician like, you know, uh, Deora, Colonel Deora, if empathetic patients offer more detailed history, they are more satisfied with your care, they are more adherent to the treatment plans, and they are less likely to sue malpractices. Empathetic physicians also benefit from better health, well-being, and job satisfaction. Expressing empathy is highly effective, powerful, which builds patient stress, calms anxiety, improves health outcomes. So this is the paper which says occupational burnout and empathy influence blood pressure control in primary care physicians. They did a study for more than 3 lakh patients, about 400 uh, doctors. They found empathy definitely plays a role in reducing burnout and blood pressure control. Again, communicating empathically increases clinician job satisfaction, enhances the sympathetic, empathetic care, 
also increase the physician's well-being. Empathetic clinical communication improves the quality of all interactions, not only with the doctors, with others, patients, families, colleagues, and loved ones. 82% of the medical malpractice claims are the result of breakdown in communication. The prevalence of somatoform disorders has been estimated to be as, as high as 30% and can only be diagnosed by a physician who is carefully attuned to the patient. Then, I, the, the, the importance of empathy, it increases patient satisfaction, improve clinical health uh, outcomes, reduce clinician's burnout, increase reimbursement, improve team collaboration, reduce malpractice claims. It is good for the patient, it is good for the physician, it is good for the institution. And be actively promoted, supported, and cultivated in the profession. And this is again another paper which says importance of empathy among medical doctors to ensure high quality healthcare level. And what are the benefits of connecting with empathy? When a patient recognizes both clinical competence and caring demonstrated by empathy, trust develops. When Bhattacharya talks to the patient, he's not only clinically competent, he also shows that he cares. So his trust with the patient improves. And these are the benefits of empathy. Better care, better workplace, better health. Improved immune function also. If you have empathy, that also improves Im immune function, decreased health care and cost. And can empathy be learned? Because uh, now the uh, DVI is thinking, why we not uh, you know, train our PGs, RPGs, empathy? You can train. Like the development of social skill, the key to empathy is learning experience, learning and practice. How can we develop and build empathy? Learning about the benefit of empathy, listening to the people's feeling, understanding your own emotions. Now, teaching and learning empathy. If you have an observation skill, you enhance the observation skill that make it easier for the uh, doctor to detect patient's emotional state. While improving communication skills should help a physician convey his feelings to the patient. The actual emotional process of empathy may be aided by exercise such as self-reflecting or writing, which helps an observer become more aware, aware of her own emotions and subsequently improve her ability to be empathetic towards another. These physicians who practices deep acting technique may over time learn to be genuinely empathic, empathetic and thus teaching acting may be a method of teaching empathy. That's what I was telling you, you can have a skit. And teaching course, empathy and medical professionalism in a course. The course uh, contains <laughs> lessons in cultural awareness, ethics, discussions, role playing, in which we acted parts of physician patient. Several sessions were uh, taught and they are asked to give a written ref self-reflection form. Medical college teaching, now it is disease oriented. When it comes to patients, think with your head, not with your heart. Be objective when dealing with the patient. Do not let your own emotions. Keep your own emotions at bay, lest you become too involved. This is akin to alexithymia. Methods of teaching, audio, and I already told you, improving narrative skills, theatrical performance, role playing, valiant method, group discussions coordinated by psychoanalysts. The need of our, therefore, my dear friends, patient-centric rather than disease-centric area. This is another point which I would like to drive home. Now, empathy exercise. We have exercise for empathy. The models are there. In ACP, we have a modules. So if you want, you ask Anuj, he can get you the module of ACP, how empathy can be developed. If a physicians regularly take time to reflect their practice and patient care, they can in sense refreshed and reminded in the importance role played by the patients. These reflections can be the, the on, being a doc, on being a doctor and a piece of my mind. These are there in Annals of Internal Medicine and Journal of the American Medical Association. If you see the journals, these two topics are there. A lot of articles are there. You can read those articles about the empathy. And then uh, listen to the people. I always say this is my mantra. Learn to listen, listen to learn. Not only in the empathy, for everything. Learn to listen and listen to learn. Then listening with empathy. There are, uh, you know, we always uh, spend more time I'm stuck. We always, uh, you know, say we don't have time. We do more paperwork than talking to the patient. 
So do less paperwork, talk to the patient. There are eight steps of listening. Listen with under, uh, underlying feelings, listen for understanding the needs and values, and also look for the cues, reflect on your experience, eight steps for learning. And this is the listening with empathy. There are a lot of values you have add, and especially empathy, you always respect, acceptance, and support. And the largest barrier to emphatic care is not enough time, more pressing issues, do not want to be a social worker. I am not a social worker, I should be empathetic. So you should be also to a certain extent social worker, talk to the patient. Where does the empathy come from? Is it generic, genetic or do we learn empathetic over time? Recent studies suggest both genetics and our environment play a role in how each of us develop in the process of empathy. Certain parts of our brain tend to regulate empathy. Therefore, some people's ability to develop empathy can be more difficult if that area of the brain is not properly functioning. Our environment, the majority of studies suggest our environment tends to make a largest impact on each of us in developing empathy. And we have learned from extensive research, the capacity for empathy is not merely an innate trait, it is also a skill that can be learned and expanded. Empathetics was founded with a mission to expand empathy and compassion by teaching individuals and teams how to understand, appreciate, and respond to perspective and emotion of others. Understanding your own emotions will build the empathy. So you love yourself first. You do empathy for yourself. I want the organizers to be empathetic to me. At least two minutes you give me, because you know, you already uh, given me only 16 minutes, that too last minute you said, so I, I rushed to at least. Okay, if you want to understand the emotions of others, you have to learn to empathize with yourself, which is, the, which is done by understanding and accepting your own feelings and expressing them. So the good news about empathy is what when it declines. Over a period of time, Bina was talking to me, it declines, so it can also be learned. Patients who don't feel cared about longer recovery rates and poorer Im immune function. Empathetics offer evidence-based educational tools and skills to build both individual and team empathetic capacities to create a more authentic emotional connection with others in every healthcare. So empathy matters in every corner. Let us develop important skill and create more empathetics. So the power of empathy. Don't say not allow, I see you. And conclusion, empathy among healthcare users and professionals significantly contributes to how both groups behave as well as to their therapy and overall well-being. The development of empathy skills constitutes an important priority in education of health, social care students and should be encouraged. Educational programs should primarily be performed in a hands-on the way that will strengthen the students' personal and social skills and allow them to effectively <coughs> communicate with their patients. Summing, summing up with this quote, be kind for everyone you meet is a fighting a hot battle. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, you know, in practice, Everyone should practice empathy, and we should have, we should uh, include this empathy in the curriculum of the students. And students from the beginning, they should learn. And over a period of time, they may develop compassionate fatigue. That also can be trained, and we can uh, do this. If you are really empathetic, you get more practice, and you get a more patient uh, relationship, uh, patient doctor's relationship also. So, ladies and gentlemen, my dear brothers and sisters, I request all of you be empathetic, be sympathetic and be kind to everyone and uh, support our ACP for all these programs. Congratulations once again to Anuj. Thank you so much.